Let's continue with our file upload and work on the ability to download the files. Before we do that, I want to mention that in the last video we introduced a bug towards the end of the video where we did the refactoring to use the fly system to detect the MIME type. This caused an issue where if you try to upload a file, it would upload it as an empty file and I'll show that to you right now. So if we go to the page here and you might notice this new UI here, I'll talk about that in a minute. But if I try to upload the receipt here, we see that the upload works. And then if we go and open the storage and try to open the file that was just uploaded and this is the file that was just uploaded. If we try to open this file, we see that it's an empty file. And the reason this is happening is because within the request validator here, we're opening the stream and we're getting the contents, which essentially puts the pointer at the end of the file because we're getting all the contents of the file. And then within the controller, when we actually do the upload, we are again reading the stream and we're trying to get the contents again. But at that point, there is no more content to read from the stream and therefore it's blank. To fix this, we either need to rewind the stream so it puts the pointer in the beginning of the stream or we need to not read the contents of the stream in request validator. Either way would work, but I think I'm just going to change this method to instead of detecting the MIME type using the contents, we'll detect the MIME type uh, from the file. So we'll just pass the TMP file path and we'll get rid of this. And now it should work as expected. If we go here and try to upload it again, Let's open the storage and I think this is the one that was just uploaded. Let's double check. Let's open the table. The last one is the one that ends at D22. So yeah, it's this one. If I try to open it, now it doesn't open as a blank file, which means that it is actually a valid PDF file. If I add the extension here to that PDF and try to open it, we see that it works. Also, I want to mention that we did not add any client side validation, mainly because I don't want to get held up working on JavaScript and HTML validation too much. I'm trying to focus mainly on PHP. So if you want to, you can go ahead and add some client side validation on your own. All right, so let's move on. I've made a couple of changes behind the scenes related to the UI, as you might have noticed here. As you can see, when we uploaded the file, a new receipt document icon gets created in here. And this is a new column that we added to the table here, which basically displays the receipt files. And then you can delete it, or if you click on it, it's supposed to open that file. So if I click on it now, it takes us to a blank page because I haven't implemented that yet. That's something that we're going to do together. Let's review the code changes quick here. So if we go back to the code, let's open the transaction controller where we are loading the transactions for the data table. You will see a new field here that we're passing called receipts, which basically maps over or loops over all the receipts and just returns name and ID of the receipt entity. Then within the transactions, uh, wherever we are instantiating the table, we have this new section to handle the rendering of the receipt column. And in there we have custom rendering because we have to load the icon for each receipt. And that's why we're iterating over the receipts here. And for each receipt, we're creating an anchor element, the span icon, the delete icon, and then we're putting them all together and returning them as HTML. We also have the click event handler uh, in here for the delete receipt button that doesn't really do much at the moment. It just makes a delete request to this endpoint and then reloads the table if the response is okay. Then if we go to the receipt controller, we have two endpoints, download and delete. And these are the ones that are not implemented and we're gonna be implementing the download endpoint in this lesson. So the first thing that we need to do here is that we should get the receipt and transaction IDs from the arguments and then check to ensure that the both transaction and receipt actually exist. Now, if I open the web routes file here, we see those two new uh, routes in here, and these are our endpoints. So for the download uh, endpoint, we are passing the transaction ID as first and then the receipt ID as the second. So transaction ID is our first argument and then ID is the second argument. So let's go back in here and we'll do transaction ID equals args transaction ID and then receipt ID equals args receipt ID. 
then we are going to copy this in here to check the transaction and we'll duplicate that and we'll check the receipt as well so let's replace this in here and then we'll replace this in here let's change this to receipt and i think that's good i don't think we're actually going to need the transaction in here so let's get rid of that we should also replace the transaction service with receipt service here and that should be good next we also need to check to make sure that the receipt that user is trying to download actually belongs to the given transaction otherwise we should respond with some kind of error so we'll do if receipt get transaction get id doesn't equal to transaction id will return a response maybe with status 401. Great, so now we can use the file system to read the stream using the storage file name that we have on the receipt entity, and then we can return it as part of the body. So we can do something like file equals this file system read stream. The path is receipt slash and then the storage file name which is on the receipt entity so we'll do get storage file name and to return it with the response we can do something like with body and pass the file body as part of the stream now to do that we need to instantiate a new stream object so we'll do new stream and pass the file resource as an argument we should also set some headers like the content type and content disposition so that the browser understands what sort of content we are sending back so let's set the content disposition first and if you don't know content disposition header is basically used to specify the presentation style of the contents that we are returning so that browser knows how to handle it so we can do something like response equals response with header and set content disposition and we can set this to either be an attachment for example so that it downloads the file or we can set it to be inline to display the content directly in the browser window using inline is useful for things like pdf and image files for example because it opens them uh, directly in the browser instead of forcing to download if you want to force the download then you would use the attachment option we're going to go with the inline option for our use case so we'll do inline and then we'll set the file name to be the actual original file name of the receipt which we also store on the receipts table so let's set that and the next header that we need to set is the content type header so that the browser knows what type of content it needs to serve so we'll add another with header call here and we'll set content type and we need to set this to the media type of the file now the thing is we don't actually have the media type saved on the receipt record one way we can get the media type is to detect it again using the file system but i don't think we should do that again we validated the file when it was uploaded so i think it's safe to store it as another column in the receipts table that we can reference later on so let's open the receipt entity here let's scroll up we're going to add a new property here called private string media type and this is going to be column with name media underscore type then we need to run the diff command so that it generates the proper migration for it so let's do php expenies diff it generated the migration let's open this migration here and review the sql that was generated it's adding a new column here which is correct but i want this to be added after the storage file name that's how we have it here so let me copy this and we'll do after storage file name this looks good let's run the migration so we'll do php expenies migrate that worked let's uh, review the receipts table to make sure that it's there and sure enough we have the media type there let's close that out and we need to generate the setter and getters for this so let's press alt insert on php storm let's generate getters and setters and let's take them to the end of the file so let's put it in here and the set media type should return this and we'll change this to receipt now we need to set the media type when uploading the receipt which we're doing within the receipt controller store method 
So in here, we need to pass the media type of the file. And we can get the media type here from the file object because we know the file has been already validated by our request validator. And actually, we should not be passing this to the right. We should be passing this to the create method here. Let's go into the create method and we'll add a new parameter here called media type. And then we'll simply set that in here. So receipt set media type media type. And now we should be saving the media type correctly. Now, if we go back to the receipt controller and scroll down to the download method, we should be able to grab the media type from the receipt entity. Now, of course, this is not going to work for the existing records that we have because these uh, records don't have the media type set. So I'm just going to set them manually so that we can test it out. But any new upload should work as expected. So we're going to set this uh, since this is a PDF to application PDF. And let's do the same thing here. Same thing here. And this is going to be image PNG, I think. And this is going to be image PNG as well. I have these files as like a screenshot of the original receipt PDF file that I downloaded from Google. And now if I click on this receipt PDF, it is giving us a warning undefined array key receipt ID on line 53. So let's take a look. Receipt controller. Oh yeah, this is just ID, not receipt ID. Because in the web.php, we have that as ID. Let's try this one more time. And now we're getting slim application error. So it says get by ID argument one ID must be of type int. Yeah, I forgot to cast this to integers. So we need to cast them to integers. Let's give it a try again. Seems like it's working. Now let's test the image file. So I think this is an image receipt underscore image. Let's click on that. And it's opening as blank. Oh, I think it doesn't work because uh, the files that I uploaded were empty uh, because of the bug. Let's upload a new PNG file. Let's open it. And sure enough, that works and it opens the PNG file. Now let's talk about an exercise that I want you to do on your own. If you remember at the end of section one, we built a very basic transaction importer using procedural PHP. Then in section two, I asked you to convert it to object oriented PHP. Now I want you to add that feature to the XPennies project. Note that you will not be able to just simply copy and paste the code that you wrote before into this project because it won't work. But I think you will be able to implement the same idea into this project. So here are the instructions. First, you need to add a new button here next to the new transaction called import transactions, which when clicked should show a model where you can select a CSV file. So pretty much similar to the receipt file upload model. You need to make sure to implement the proper file validation to only allow CSV file uploads. You don't need to worry about the format of the CSV file. You can assume that the users will use some sort of template to do their imports. I've added the sample CSV template file within the resources directory. So check that out and use that for your imports. It should be pretty similar to the one that we used in the first exercise. Then you should read the uploaded file, parse it and create transaction records. A couple of things to keep in mind while working on this project. First, the CSV template file contains a category column. This means that when creating transactions, you need to associate them with the proper category. You can assume that the category cells contain the category name, so you can find the proper category using the category name. If category is not found by the name, then just create the transactions without category. You don't need to actually store the uploaded CSV file because we don't have an entity or table like we have for receipts. So for now, that is not required. However, if you want to challenge yourself, then feel free to create a new entity, a new table, and store the imported file, and then use that imported file from the storage to do your imports. And finally, as a bonus exercise, if you want to challenge yourself even more, add the ability to delete these receipts. Half the job is already done. I've provided you with the UI as well as the endpoint and controller method. So you just have to fill that controller method in and uh, delete the receipt record as well as the physical file. So this is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to post them down below in the comments. Smash the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video where we'll go over the solution.